It is time for the 890 Jump review, and perhaps the most, the least spoken about, but one of the most important features, to me, anyway, is right here. And I'm going to log into the game. Here we go. There it is. Bad logout, and it works. Mwah. So, why is that so important, you say? Well, can I get an external view on that? Maybe not. So, why is that important? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm really, really sick and tired of waking up at Port Alisa or all these other places all the time. And uh, being able to log out in this medical bed, what a godsend. And it works. We'll turn the lights on here in a second. So, a selling feature. If there ever was one. A bed logout waking up in the game in your 890 jump for me is a major, major selling feature. So before I get into my review of the 890 jump, let me just start off, uh, let me preempt it by saying that my initial reaction was not what you think it's going to be. In fact, uh, unpopular opinion alert, my initial reaction was not, yeah, this is amazing. I was, uh, I'm kind of, I was extremely is the word skeptical, uh, or rather I'd say unsure about why this ship is the way it is, what its function would be. But uh, as we start flying around and as you start taking it around and using it more, my opinion changed. And I guess, you know what, let's start at the back of the ship. And I know uh, it's dark. I kind of enjoy the dark mood lighting here. I'm going to turn the lights on when we get to the cockpit and uh, you'll take a look. But... Uh, Usually when you start and you uh, make your way to the ship, you come up in this hangar right here. And, uh, oh man, okay. <laughs> I had a, a ship in here, so that's where the uh, piece went, I see. Actually, I think the rest of the ship, it's a Sabre Raven, is uh, still in my hangar in the front. But we'll get there in a second. So when you first come up into the ship, this is where you start off. And a lot of people are concerned, like, why is this engineering panel here? If someone does infiltrate your ship, could they not just point their railgun at this and blow it up? Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, will you be able to? Is it going to be shielded very well? I think there'll be ways to counter that if it's going to happen. But uh, let's make our way up to the cockpit. Now, there's been plenty of tours of the 890 already done. Uh, CIG did a 50-minute tour with actual ship designers. That was a great job. And there's a great YouTuber called Morphologist, which uh, he's an architect in real life, and he did a whole long, long 30-minute uh, trip through the ship talking about all the design aspects of it, which was great. But uh, for my purposes and as a org leader, I'm not too concerned about the luxury. I don't care about that. Uh, I think it's nice, but uh, I'm more concerned about what can this ship do. Where am I going? Escape rough. Let's go there. So let's make our way to the cockpit first of all, and uh, turn on all the lighting. And oh, elevators work. They don't kill you <laughs> for a change. This is a great, great patch. Uh, escape raft over there, as you can see by the sign. Good signage throughout the ship, and even in this low lighting, you can see it's lit up very nicely. You'll see this all change once I put the actual lights on. And let's make our way down, uh, up rather, through the cockpit. And uh, here we are in the uh, atrium. Uh, this looks a lot more impressive with all the lights on. Like, let, me, let me go to the cockpit and turn this all on. Uh, again, very fancy, very luxurious. Beautiful gold laid marble floors. You'll see it all in a second. Uh, but also, okay, this is, uh, I guess, a good place to start. And uh, the cockpit. Now, if you are running a large group, a large organization, how useful is this area to you? Will this globe over here display any kind of meaningful tactical information? It does show you the radar that the pilot sees. So I'm hopeful it will do that. From an org standpoint, is this going to be a useful ship? We have yet to find out. So let me turn the lights on here. Okay, are we powered up? Uh, I think we are. So here it is from the outside. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, it's come a long way from concept. There were a couple of versions on it where it looked like a duck face. But they've definitely done a great job at the styling. I love the serrations on the edges there. The kind of ship bow. Very pretty. Very sleek. Uh, and I do like they went for this arrow type shape with those two holes in the sides for 
whatever they're for aerodynamics i guess uh, i definitely do like those cuts in there it lightens up the ship you see <laughs> And uh, the backside of it, obviously, the uh, beautiful engine. Stylings taken from the 600i. Listen to these engines. Listen to this. Oh, so good. Again. Yeah. They finally, finally got very decent engine sounds in the game. And uh, you know what? I find very little wrong with this. Uh, Design-wise, I was skeptical, but after flying it for a bit, I definitely do like the design. Uh, the sound is on point. Engines are great. The ship is fast, although in the initial Evocati patch, it was very slow. It was like driving an oil tanker. Very slow to turn, but they changed it in the more recent patches. And it's great, but let's go back to the inside and uh, I guess take a look around at some of the features which uh, I think are interesting now I'm not going to give you a full tour of every single aspect there's tons of videos out there already talking about all that the CIG one being very interesting but there's nice little look at that there's uh, I don't know if that's gonna be functional or not but they've definitely taken a lot of care in the smaller details and used the space a lot more effectively uh, I don't know what these closets are, or whether they're going to be weapons or data racks or whatever they are, but uh, something's going to go in there, which looks like it will probably be important. So, beginning with this uh, main common area atrium, uh, again, as an org leader, I'm not concerned with the... As an org leader, I guess, well, it's personal preferences, it's personal tastes also. I don't care much for the luxury part of this game. I don't care about being the captain of the uh, Royal Caribbean cruise liner. Uh, now, I do understand that uh, a part of the gameplay mechanic will be to pick up VIPs and transport them. So if you are into the transport part of this game, uh, if you have a Constellation Phoenix, which is a luxury ship, there may be a certain class of passenger which will put out a request to go uh, and get a ride in a Phoenix. But there will be also, I guess high-class passengers that will only ride on an 890 jump. So you will need to own an 890 jump to accept those missions. I'm assuming that's going to happen because that's how it is in Elite Dangerous where you have the fancy ships to transport passengers. Only certain passengers of a certain class will go on a certain ship. So I highly suspect that's going to be the case. Uh, will be a very fancy VIP and uh, you'll need an 890 jump to transport him. And when you do, he will go over to this room right here. Uh, look at this marble floor. Let me just turn on my light, I guess. It doesn't do it justice at the moment because of the uh, lighting. But this is a good. Look at the marble here with gold veins going through it. And I love the little uh, markings they have for telling you where you are. Very futuristic, very nicely done. And, uh, okay, so you brought a passenger. This is the room he will take. And it's very sleek, very smooth lines throughout. Beautiful textures on the tables. Look at those tiles. They've taken such detail. And I really do love this chess piece, uh, this chess board over here. I want to get one of those in real life. The roof, the recessed lighting, uh, an aquarium along the wall. And I believe they said that these walls here might possibly be video walls where you can change the background to different settings. So uh, jungle or desert or whatever you want the settings to be very fancy very pretty and uh yeah you know the artist who designed these pieces here very nice so uh that aside uh like i said i don't care much about the vip transport of it what i care about is the i guess org function of it or military function of it so the ship itself oh while i'm here can i get to the front okay that's gonna be the spa you've probably seen that already Let's go one deck down. Actually, let's go back to where we started from at the bottom. All right, here it is with the lights on. This is a massive ship. It takes time to walk between places. So when you first come on the ship, this is what you see. Uh, I was concerned about the engineering panel with your jump drive being right there. I'm concerned about the, uh, is that the gravity generator, I guess, being right there. Is this going to be susceptible to espionage? Uh, your life support system is right there. Can someone simply come on board and destroy those? I don't know, but I'm sure there'll be ways to deal with that. Uh, I'm suspecting this will dispense 
uh, med pens, which is very cool. And once you come up here, there is where I spawned from in the beginning. Open up. Oh, wait, before we get there. Now here is an underrated but extremely important area, in my opinion. You and your friends are jumping on the 890 jump. You want to go somewhere. There's ops happening. You need weapons. Where do you go? I need guns, to quote John Wick. And weapon racks right over here. Look at that. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, I'm wrong, actually. No, 16. Uh, each of these holds two rifles, so it should be 32. Correct me if I'm wrong, but each of these should contain two rifles. Uh, so 32, well, 16, I'm guessing 32 rifles in total in this area. And if these boxes at the bottom can contain ammo, this is a great way to arm you and your crew to go do ops combat somewhere. This I love. This, I think, is great, and the fact you can have a ballista or a couple of ground vehicles right over there in the hangar where you came from, and up to three arrows, makes this ship a little pocket carrier. Well, a pocket carrier. It's a carrier, for the sense of the term, uh, that it can carry you and your friends to wherever you need to take ops on. Med Bay, right over here. Assuming, I don't know if this is going to be a feature or not, will your friends be able to spawn into your ship? If you're in another area of the verse, can they come in and simply spawn there? But as I showed you in the beginning, bed lockout does work. Now, the mirrors do not, reflections not in, but a floating ball of light is. <laughs> so that is yet to be seen, whether you can spawn in your friend's ship or not. I don't know if it's going to be, but a very useful feature if it is. Now, let's make our way to the front. Uh, hangar. Yes, I'm going the right way. I like this little airlock. Very cool. Oh, wait, it's gone. Okay, forget that. <laughs> Some guy in a Saber Raven crashed on my deck and I opened up the doors and I swallowed his ship and I've been keeping it in here for a couple of days. It's been persistent until today for some reason. It didn't come out. So if you haven't seen it, this is the front hangar. Uh, this goes to a turret over there, a little basketball hoop, and uh, this takes you to the rest of the crew quarters. Uh, they definitely will be taking cues from this. I'm curious to know if they'll be taking these design cues. Oh, come check this out in here. This is one hell of a cool pool table. Look at those little lights on the pockets. Look at the texture. On the mat there. Isn't that pretty? And people walk past this a thousand times and don't notice that, yes, there's actual texture on there. Uh, I'm a sucker for these things. I, I love looking at those small details. And uh, I do hope they give us a game to play on that, which uh, I don't see why not. So EVA pods over there. And uh, here's something which the uh, 600. Now, I know I said I'm not going to give you a full tour of the ship. Yet here we are. But uh, the 600, one of the things which bugged me about the 600 was that the crew quarters are wide open. That made no sense from a design point of view, unless in the future everyone likes looking at each other sleep. But uh, here we have crew quarters. Everyone has their own individual section with a bed. And uh, I don't know if NPCs are going to fill every single spot here, but very nice. And the common area for them with fruit that has been left out for days now. It's probably dry. This is a big ship. And uh, going back to what I said in the beginning, I, uh, I don't want to say it's too big because, I mean, this is the end game ship. This is the ship that you're going to be working towards to get once you finish the entire game. This is what you strive to achieve at the end. So let me give you my final thoughts on the 890 jump in. As I said in the very beginning, that uh, the first time I walked in this ship, uh, I thought this is just, too big this is for my personal preferences it's too big keep in mind that there is no right single answer for everyone everyone has their own situation everyone has their own needs and desires of what they need a ship to be in this game so i can't say yes you should buy this ship or you shouldn't buy the ship uh for me personally the kraken can you see the poster back there the kraken is more my style i like pipes going through and dirt and grime and oil on the floor that is my perception of what i would like to see my big ship be but this is definitely the end game ship that a lot of people are working towards as it should be there is one thing that the 890 will do the best and that is transporting vips 
uh, that part of the game is not in yet, but it's it's going to be probably okay at exploration. It's going to be okay at uh, transporting troops. Well, pretty good. 36 rifle racks, three arrows in the front, a ballista in the back. So if you have an organization, a small org or a big org, and you want to use this as a ship to transport stuff, it can do that, and it will do that. But it's not going to be the best ship at doing that. I think the Idris will definitely be better at doing that specific task. Uh, so to answer the question, should you buy the ship? Here's the thing. The average demographic here in Star Citizen is old. We are old farts in this game. The average demographic is the 33 to 45 year old age range. So you are a young professional. You have more money than you have time. If that is your situation and you have $50,000 sitting in the bank cash, you have $1,000 in your pocket that you just don't know what to do with, it's burning a hole, treat yourself. Go for it. Why not? You know, if you don't see yourself grinding away at the game to be able to buy the ship, buy the ship in the game, buy it now you're funding the game development but it's expensive this is i think it's going to go for 890 or maybe a thousand dollars uh it's a pricey ship for most people i would say earn it in the game get yourself the constellation phoenix first in the game transport vips get the 600 transport vips get the 890 after that that's how this is supposed to work Give me your thoughts on the 890 Jump. What do you think? How's it compare to the 600i? If you like this content, as always, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. And I will see you in the next one.